Last week we got our application talking, okay, connecting to our database and created a user model. This week we're going to build a form, post to our backend, handle the post, and use our model to send the data to our DB. Ready to get started? Let's do it. First we need a form. Start your server if it's not already running and load up localhost port 3000 in your browser. You should see the generic welcome to express text. We're going to replace that with a field set, so switch to your text editor and open up slash views slash index.ejs. Find this line and replace it with all of the following. There we go. Note that we've included a field, Twitter, that we didn't define in our schema last week. This is intentional. If you save and refresh, you'll see our extremely ugly and unstyled form. If you'd like a tutorial on how to validate this sort of form, I recommend visiting JS Quick Hit 60, where we build a simple contact form and validate it both on the front end and the back end. For today, we're going bareback, which I do not recommend in a production environment since your DB will very rapidly be filled with nonsense at best and malicious code at worst. But it should be fine for a simple test on our local machines. Our form's done, so we move onward to handling that post. Open up slash routes slash users.js. First things first, I don't like that camel case in username. It makes it sound like the user's name instead of, well, the username. So replace that line with this one. Simple enough. This is good because it means our model will match our incoming form data, except for the Twitter property, which is useful for not having to do conversions. Next, above the module.exports line at the bottom, but below everything else, write the following code. You may notice that this code isn't going to do much right now. Well spotted. We need to turn those comments into actual code, but first we need to create a model. You might remember that last week I said that models were separate things from schemas. Well, they are. We create a model from the schema and then use the model to interact with the database. So just below our schema definition, add this. Now back to our post. We're going to replace the three lines of comments with the following code. That's all it takes. Save the file and head back to your browser. Fill in the form with some data and submit it. You should see your success message show up. That's, well, conceptually it's cool, but it's not very exciting. Let's check and see if that data actually made it to our DB. Open up a new terminal window and just type Mongo. This will initialize the MongoDB shell, which by default connects to localhost, which is where we're storing our data. Type the following. You should see your JSQHDB in the list. To look at data inside that DB, we type the following. Use JSQH. Once we do that, it sets an internal DB variable to that particular DB. We can now issue commands to our JSQHDB via that variable, like this. Hey, there's our user. There's a few things to pay attention to here. The first is that the Twitter value did not get recorded. That's because it's not in our schema, which is kind of the whole point of schemas. They ensure that data you don't want in your DB doesn't get sent to your DB. The next thing to note is that the user's collection was created automatically when we saved our first user. This is just a handy thing that Mongoose does. If we'd named our model person instead of user, we'd end up with a collection called persons. I suppose this means you should shy away from model names that have irregular plurals like uh, mouse or cactus. Should you need to use those, Mongoose does let you specify collection names, but that's out of the scope of this tutorial. We're all set for this week. Next week we're going to read data back out of the database and display it on our website. See you then!